once again, good morning everyone. Um, allow me to introduce myself first. I am Merz De Leon, or you may call me M, or the kids in school call me Ate M. Po. I'm from the guidance office, and I see we have a total of uh, 25 participants on board. Um, I think some are still coming in. I saw in our registration for they're just registering now, so maybe they can come in uh, a little later. But welcome. Thank you for joining us uh, in this wellness webinar with the theme, Be Well, Harnessing a Culture of Well-Being. Mental wellness comes from feeling balanced, connected to others, and ready to meet life challenges. Family and all significant people in our lives play an important role in our mental health. With all the changes we encounter, like changes in routine and priorities, um, we may have overlooked checking in on ourselves. In today's webinar, we will learn more about looking after not only our children's mental health, but also our own. To formally start our webinar, I would like to call on Sir Al Astrodilio, our school principal. Sir Al. Thank you very much, uh, M, uh, for, for that opening. And I'd like to uh, welcome, of course, our speakers, you know, Dr. Roma and Jewel, and uh, the other teachers who are joining us. Teacher Bona, of course, is uh, here with us, and uh, the rest of the parents. Uh, I'd like to say first that uh, based on the reports that we have read so far, suicide you know, in the country, specifically in the Philippines, uh, the cases of suicide has doubled you know, compared to that of last year. You know? So that's like a rise, a meteoric rise, of about 2,000 plus. Still, what baffles us here is that uh, I think when it comes to suicide, we know very well that more are unreported. You know? compared to those that are reported. And on the side of education, uh, we also have to acknowledge that in truly the enrollment no, for this school year has gone below no, the, 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 the standard. No, I think it's a two, it's a, around two or one million below no, what we're supposed to have expected. And these cases pretty much no, uh, are owed to the fact uh, that the pandemic has really no, gotten into you know, all, all pretty much you know, societal uh, systems. You know? Unemployment for many. And of course, because of this unemployment, children, you know? children were not able to enroll. Uh, one thing, however, I'd like to emphasize here before uh, uh, passing, you know, passing the floor to, passing back the floor to M is that there was a study done by Capaldi in 2019, no? involving thousands of parents. And in this study, what they found out was that uh, st uh, students now, or children nowadays, are feeling less, no? less accomplished and less fulfilled. No? Uh, so what they found out in the study was that the problem was not on self-esteem or on motivation. So children are feeling less accomplished at that. No? And through the involvement of the parents, no, Capaldi found out that the reason for this was parents or the adults pretty much no, that are uh, involved. Okay, that are involved with the children are not engaged with them that much. And since the adults are not engaged with the children, the children also, on the other hand, did not no, or were not equipped with the necessary tools to respond effectively. So, and this has been compounded further by online learning. No? And this has been confounded uh, further with, uh, by uh, online learning. And so I'm so happy this morning that we have Dr. Roma and Jewel to pretty much share to us, no? what we can do as adults, as parents, teachers, and uh, important others, children, to ensure that no, a well-being overall, no, the overall well-being would still be you know, handled at that. Still, we have to admit no, that uh, a lot perhaps present in this uh, webinar would be those who are all right no, or okay in a sense. No? 
But then again, sabi ko nga, uh, hopefully those who are okay and not are really not needing assistance when it comes to their overall well-being will be instruments, no? Instruments for people who are needing assistance or help. And uh, uh, this and my prayer is that we really have takeaways from the words of uh, Dr. Roma and Jewel at that. So with that, welcome. Welcome to this webinar. M, thank you very much for having prepared this. No? Back to you. Thank you very much, Sir Al. Before we proceed uh, with our program, uh, may I request everyone to turn on their cameras to a uh, for a more interactive um, webinar. Um, we are just meeting virtually. Uh, so compared to before po that we can see each other face to face, uh, mahirap naman po na yung laptop ang kaharap natin or only our gadgets. I would personally prefer po that we interact with you. We can see your beautiful faces um, and then we can also talk to you. We can see how you are doing kahit virtually lang po. So may I request everyone po to turn on their cameras so that our speakers also can see you. Of course, so magkakakilala na tayo in school, but our speakers po don't uh, know you personally or even virtually po. So, hiya, thank you, um, Ma'am Imelda Caballero for opening your camera. Teacher Roshan, good morning. Thank you very much. Um, we also have here Ma'am Sandrea. I saw Ma'am Sandrea a while ago po. Um, she is our uh, department head for uh, the uh, preschool and elementary department. So there, um, allow me to proceed. Thank you very much po, for turning on your camera. So to introduce our first speaker, may I call on Mambona Sherry Yap, the academic head for junior high school. Mambona. Yes, good morning, uh, M, and to everybody. So thank you for joining us today. So it is my great pleasure to introduce our uh, first speaker today who will uh, uh, share with us the impact on the pandemic eye on our mental health. It is a timely topic as we re rely more these days on the usage of gadgets that spending too much time on screen seemingly becomes more a necessity than merely for pleasure. Our speaker is a graduate of the University of Baguio, where she graduated with honors. She's a member of the Optometric Association of the Philippines and once was a board member from 2015 to 2019. An associate member of the Philippine College of Optometrists and now the Optometric Association of the Philippines CAR Governor from 2015 to the present. Since 2016, our guest speaker continued to be a private practitioner of custom designing fitted contact lenses to improve vision or known as orthokeratology. So if you would like to improve your eyesight without going through eye surgery or wearing prescription glasses, you might want to visit iBox Optical Boutique, which is co-owned by our first speaker. So everyone, join me as we welcome Dr. Roma M. Gonzalez. Dr. Roma, I think you're on mute for. <laughs> I think Dr. Roma po is having a technical uh, difficulty. <laughs> it's okay, Dr. Roma. You may, um, and there you go. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for that very kind introduction. Uh, my task for today will basically be dealing with discussing to you guys the impact of um, the pandemic eye. Um, actually, before COVID-19, there was already a very great impact of the 
way back 2018, May 9, 2018, there was already a very great increase when it comes to refractive errors. Um, an estimated amount of at least 39, uh, 285 million uh, people worldwide are estimated to be visually impaired. So what happens when this one, um, when there is the occurrence of this visual impairment? Anxiety, stress results. When patients come over, um, we start to notice that they complain to us about Blurring of vision. First screen. My first screen. This one's are the common uh, common complaints we encounter whenever we're having our um, consultation. Initially, they complain to us about blurring of vision for both. Uh, distance and near. And what is very noticeable about this one lately is that mas intense. Initially, when we were doing this before the pandemic, they would tell us, malabo, malayo, malabo, malapit. But now, kumbaga with feelings talaga siya. It's really blurring of vision for both near and far. Tapos dryness of the eyes. You have to remember that our eyes are not designed to be dry. Um, we would always, the things I'm trying to share as of now are very basic. This ones are the things we already know, pero often because we're too engrossed with what we're doing senior, we tend to forget this ones. Dryness of the eyes or tearing. So when we talk about tearing, you would tell us, so sabihin mo, it's dryness of the eyes, but why are my eyes tearing? This ones are called your cytokines. This is a signal for the body to take a break, which we often ignore. So when you start working with your laptops, your computers, your screens, you go on and on and on. Minsan magugulat ka, it's already around three hours and you have not even taken a break. Secondarily, you would complain about headaches. Si headache, minsan meron pa yan, uh, you localize your headache. I ask them to localize. And they won't be able to localize kasi all parts of the body talaga or all parts of the head are, is really very painful. You also have your foreign body sensation. You have your photophobia and your glare. Definitely, if the surface of the eye is really very dry, you're going to complain to us about photophobia or light sensitivity. Blepharospasm. Some would tell us that when, uh, when they look through the mirror, they'd be able to see that may twitching yung eyes. Ibig sabihin pagod na pagod na siya. And then thirdly, you would be complaining to us about digital eye strain. You'll tell us that every time nasa harap po ako ng screens ko, masakit talaga si ulo. So I think these complaints are not only coming from my patients, but basically even you who are in front of your screens are complaining basically about this one. Um, these things that you complain to us will result to anxiety and stress. Who would want discomfort? Nobody wants discomfort. Everybody wants to feel comfortable. We know the, where these things are coming from, but the problem is sometimes we do not know how to address them. Or um, sometimes we fail to, to pinpoint which of the things na mali yung ginagawa natin ang nagkukos nito. Sometimes the first thing um, na realize natin is for us to accept na meron talagang problema. Because if we fail to see, I often ask them, so alam mo ba where, it, where these problems are coming from? And patients would uh, normally tell me, siguro po sa computer, siguro po sa sobrang puyat. Alam natin, siguro. Pero very definitely alam natin, i-pinpoint where the problems are coming from. So if we start to accept, it will start to be relieved. Anong nangyayari when these things na kinakomplain natin um, are not being addressed? Meron tayong decreased productivity. We won't be able to function normally. Inefficiency, difficulty in completing tasks, sleep deprivation, increased screen time in school children, you have to remember, and teens shows a risk of reduced emotional stability. Irritable yung mga yan. So uh, our interaction talaga with peers often are being uh, affected. 
what are the recommendations or the things that we see could address these problems? These ones are very, very basic, I tell you, but often we fail to do it. We have to increase outdoor activities. I often tell my patients that as much as possible, 60 to 90 minutes should be spent outdoors. This is based from research. Hindi lang ito gusto ng mga teachers ninyo at saka ng mga parents ninyo children. This is based from research. The sunlight is a very good source of our vitamin D and dopamine. These two are very, very effective in controlling our refractive error. Um, as much as possible, we would want refractive errors to be until 400 only. Why? Every time your prescription increases, you have to understand the eye is only around 24 millimeters uh, in length. So every time your prescription goes high, it's like a balloon being inflated. You get a balloon, you start to inflate it, you'll be able to see it's thinning out. So once this uh, eyeball thins out, there are a lot of complications which can go hand in hand with it. You have your glaucoma, you have your retinal detachment. Sasabihin nung iba, grado lang yan sa mata eh. Yes, but it comes with a lot of complications, most especially if you do not address it. You have to remember dopamine uh, helps the reduction dun sa malaking increase when it comes to refractive error. We cannot really do anything much about it anymore. Once the refractive error is there, often it's not really reversible, most especially when it's nearsightedness. Why? Because your eyeball has greatly increased as compared to the regular size of the eyeball. Alang nga naman, we're growing taller, but then our eyeball is uh, hindi humahaba. Definitely, together with the growth, the eye wall increases. So if you have your dose of dopamine, which is free, and your vitamin D, the risks of the increase in your refractive ear error is being controlled. You also have to learn to regulate, regulate your screen time and screen distance. I'll give you a tip. The 20-20-20 rule is a very, very effective tool for you to be able to keep the eyes um, well relaxed. What is it? 20 minutes of near work, 20 seconds of rest, looking at least 20 feet away. Some would always argue with me, once they stay away though from the screen, nawawala na yung kanilang uh, line of thought. Sige, sabi ko na nga lang, baka po pwedeng 45 minutes. It would be a lot more helpful. Very flexible naman po kami. Or if you tell us that hindi po talaga possible, what I let you do, for example, you're having your online class, tapos wala talagang paraan. There's really no way for us to leave our posts or leave our screens. I tell them to look far, do their best to look far, and then do hard blinks. Why? By doing your hard blinks, you're able to produce better quality of tears, thereby the surface of the eye is well lubricated. Lubrication is very, very important for the eyes. Um, sometimes you say, ah, mukhang I need glasses already. I already have, I'm, I, I'm already having blurring of vision. Not all blurring of visions are caused by refractive errors. Pupwede din na your eyes or the surface of the eye is already very, very dehydrated. Frequent blinking replenishes the tear film, as I have been saying a while back. And an average computer user blinks seven times a minute, less than half the normal rate of 20. You are expected to blink 20 times within a minute. Pero there was even a research we did. We were all laughing because we placed the computer. Uh, I, we focused the computer on people working with computers. There are even times when Within an hour, you only do two to three blinks. Can you just imagine the agony na pinagdadaanan nung surface ng mata mo? And then when I ask patients to do, please blink. Dito sa clinic, I have the machine, please blink. Bakit kayo nagha-half blink? You should always be doing your full blink. Even si blink, hindi na natin kayang gawin ng tama. When in fact, this is an involuntary reflex. So, I would ask you to please put a timer dun sa tabi ninyo kung pwede and then you have to remind yourself, kailangan mo nang mag-blink. Blink, blink, blink. That's very, very important. And the distance from the screen should at least be 18 to 24 millimeters uh, uh, inches away. Please do not uh, kiss your screens. They're not going to leave. And I know you love your screen so much. 
Pero please lang po, 18 to 24 uh, inches away po tayo, away uh, from the screens. Para po mas productive tayo. You'll be able to see, now if you're already starting to slouch, you go very, very near your screens. After some time, you're already having your back pains. You're already having problems with your shoulders. Ang babata pa po natin for us to be going through therapy. So we should remember that all the time. So dito po, the 20-20-20 rule is very, very important. And then your screen distance. As you try to look at my screen now, the one I'm trying to share with you, you really have to be very, very conscious with the posture. For some companies, they even hire people na mag aasikaso or to arrange the, the ergonomics how they're going to deal with the computers, the lighting, the temperature, those are very, very important. As for the screen brightness, we would be recommending that if you're working in an area with a lot of um, windows, do not let direct sunlight hit your screen because it bounces back to your eyes. Uh, one instance, people from PhilHealth who were near, uh, the office was near us before, Parang nagulat ako kasi everybody was coming over. Everybody was coming over. And then they were trying to complain to me about headaches. Kasi sakit, sakit, sakit ng ulo ko. Bakit po? What is the position of the screen and then the window? And then I was able to see when they tried to uh, tell me the position, the direct sunlight was hitting the screen. You have to position it in a way that everything is uh, still well lighted. But then you have to see to it that the screen doesn't... Um, uh, that the sunshine or the sunlight doesn't uh, directly hit your screen para hindi siya mag ng too much na glare. You have to encourage your uh, students or the people working to do the proper posture uh, every time. I have a picture here which I illustrated so you'll be able to see the proper na position whenever you're uh, working. And then secondarily, the font size. Um, I am asking each and every one of you to make use of bigger fonts. Hindi po dahil we're a lot younger as of now, we make use of the very, very small na fonts. Huwag na nating pahirapan yung sarili natin. It would be a lot more convenient for us kung uh, we make use of bigger fonts. Secondarily, tatanungin din sa akin ng mga tao, ano po ba yung ideal? Walang ideal, honestly. It will depend on you kung ano yung komportable po kayo. That's very, very important. Minsan nga ang encouragement din namin, yung lighting ninyo will be a lot more suspended. Tapos, yung sa likod, that was the old belief kasi before, eh, we have to put daw yung lighting natin sa likod. Ang problema now, since everything is already automated or everything is already through the screens, yung mga screens natin are too bright. We have computers now, we have laptops na meron na rin siyang blue protection. So regulated na rin po siya. If the budget permits, why not? Restful sleep. A lot of you are very guilty with this one. When I ask you, anong oras kayo natutulog, you tell me, ang dami, dami, dami po namin ginagawa. So usually, we would sleep at around 3 a.m. The body is not, you have to remember, the body is not accustomed to sleeping at 3 a.m. Tapos, magmamadali kayo kasi may online class or may kailangan pang gawin, what time do you wake up? 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, imagine 3, 4, 5, 6, 3 hours sleep. Do you call that for a restful sleep? Definitely it's not. Recommended hours of sleep according to the National Sleep Foundation. Meron po tayong National Sleep Foundation. So magugulat po tayo because there are a lot of researches when it comes to this one. So ang ginawa na lang po nila, for example, for the dry eye, meron po kaming foundation din na nakatutok lang for the dry eye alone. This one naman po, nakatutok naman po ito sa sleep natin. For preschoolers, wag po tayong magpamanipulate sa mga kids po natin and para sa mga students natin. We should be very firm about this one. For preschoolers, 10 hours to 13 hours kasi nagdadevelop pa po yung mga yan. For school-age children, 9 hours to 11 hours. For teenagers, that would be 8 hours to 10 hours. You have to remember from 11 p.m. up to 3 o'clock a.m., body detoxification, naku, mali ang spelling ko. Magagalit ang mga English teachers natin. From 11 p.m. up to 3 o'clock uh, a.m., body detoxification in the liver and regeneration of cells happen. So for example, you sleep at 3 p.m., 
pa paano pa po magde-detoxify our body? There's really no chance for the body to detoxify. And you'll be able to see, I would rather let you sleep 10 o'clock hanggang 3 and then you wake up 4 o'clock onward because you're a lot more productive. At the same time, mas masigla yun eh. One recommendation pa po, you have to remember that our screens now are very high with blue light. Yun yung tinetry talaga na i-address ng manufacturers natin. Ano po ba talaga ang effect ng blue light? A lot of arguments are going, uh, going on regarding blue light. One of the things we were able to see po talaga with research is that blue light will try to inhibit the production of melatonin. Because melatonin is only produced Pag nag-start na po yan mag-sunset, is a signal na po ni katawan or na, ni body na it's already sunset. You have to produce melatonin para po makatulog tayo ng maayos. When we are so engrossed with our computer and screen work, definitely this is very, uh, very, very high sa blue light. And blue light sa environment din po during araw, it's also very high. So it will try to signal your body that melatonin should not be produced because it's still morning so you won't be able to sleep. So trust me when I tell you an hour or two, experts would say 30 minutes, pero ako hindi. It would be an hour or two before your bedtime para it won't disrupt, disrupt the normal production of your melatonin. You should stop your screen time. Tama na. Yung morning po natin from 8 o'clock until 5 until 6, that would be more than enough for us to be able to accomplish things. Um, some children would start to complain to me na, Ang hina po kasi ng ganito, hindi ko po matatapos, so, si teacher na naman ang may problema dito. Bakit po? Kasi sa sobrang dami daw po nang binibigay ninyo na schoolwork, hindi kakasya yung umaga. Um, in my own opinion, ang difference lang naman po nung when, they were, uh, when we were students and them as students now is that uh, they have more access to digital screens as compared to us before when we have to go to the library. So everything is at their fingertips. One click and everything is still there. We have to teach our children, whether our students or our children po uh, mismo, for them to do yung proper na time management. Proper time management po talaga. Um, very, very important for us to keep them well-disciplined when it comes to this one. They're very good at reasoning. They're very good at making us feel guilty. Often I would always say, hindi na ako nakikinig. I won't be, I, I don't like to listen to this one. Kasi minsan maaawa ka. ba? Pero when emotions get over kasi, the problem is we don't become very, very firm. I know what I'm talking about. My daughter went through anxiety. We went through a lot of counseling. That's the reason why I always have to be very firm when dealing with them. Or dealing with her because I only have one daughter. So that's very, very important. We have to be very, very firm. Hydration. How many glasses of water? Research will also try to tell you we have to get parang at least eight to 10 glasses of water. This is something which is um, very, very basic, not just for eye health, but for our well-being. Pero often, how many glasses of water ba ang naiinom natin? When we're too engrossed with what we're doing again, sa screen work natin, often we tend to forget. Uh, ang problema with, then with a lot of uh, hormones na nati-change ngayon because of the blue light and then our digital screens, we don't feel hunger at times. There are even times our kids would tell us when we're starting to work, Mom, alas dos na, we have not taken lunch yet. Or how many glasses of water na ba yung naiinom natin? It's already 2 o'clock. Alam mo po yung mga yon, um, there are certain things we need to remember. I would always tell my patients na when we're working at home, you have to put a glass of water sa tabi mo. Tapos you should be conscious ha, hindi lang po siya props. You have to be a lot more conscious na every time you have to take in water talaga. Every time na nauubos na siya, that is our chance for us to stand up and then refill yung water. So that's very, very basic. Intake po ng tubig. Proper nutrition and supplementation when necessary. 
lutein, mesozeosanthin, and zeosanthin. Ano po ba itong mga ito? You often hear them. Lutein is the yellow pigment in our retina. You have to remember na si lutein po uh, will keep the eyes very healthy. At the same time, it's a naturally occurring, pagbata pa po tayo ha, it's a naturally occurring na supplement. But as we grow older, nade-deplete po siya. For kids, I do not recommend for kids and teens, very, very high pa po ang lutein dun sa ating retina. So, hindi pa po natin kailangan mag-supplement. But for adults, as much as possible, we can start early. Tapos, do not deprive ourselves with the green leafy vegetables. Diba? Everybody has been lecturing to us about this one since, since we were children. Um, as people from Benguet and Baguio, we're very, very lucky because there is abundance of these um, vegetables. So, we can always take in this once. And then what's nice with the natural po kasi, just in case we don't, uh, we are not able to make use of it, it just comes out. Yun naman po ang benefit ng pag-take ng natural na supplements. Um, when buying lutein, I'll give you a very, very important din po na uh, uh, tip. You have to check and make sure that when you take in lutein for the teachers and for your parents, you have to have your mesozeosanthin and your zeosanthin. These ones are very, very important because these ones are precursors for our, us adults to be able to absorb lutein. Pag wala po yan, nilalabas mo lang yan. Kaya po sinasabi nila all the time that the urine of the Filipinos are very expensive. Why? Because often we take in a lot of supplements without us thinking or without us even reviewing kung ano ba yung mas magandang magiging benefit nito. You can always consult your doctors, not only your optometrists, your ophthalmologists, and sometimes even your internists. They will tell you, dapat ito yung itake mo para si vitamin C mo maabsorb ng katawan. Those are very, very important. Or you can always do your research. Kung may mga doubts po kayo, you can always consult somebody. Omega-3 fatty acids, these ones are very, very important for us adults. Kasi nga, for women, yung dry ice before was a lot higher. But because of the onset of online classes and digital screens, even kids are having problems with this ones. Kids are not allowed yet, ha? but for us adults, it's always very good for us to take in the omega-3 fatty acids. It can addre address yung problems natin sa heart. At the same time, it aids yung ating retina to be a lot healthier and it also helps us na, uh, to combat dry eye syndrome. Dry eye sy syndrome, honestly, is very debilitating. You won't be able to work well because everything is foggy, tapos may friction over the surface of the eye, may foreign body sensations, so you won't be able to do that. Vitamin B complex and vitamin D. Vitamin B complex, para po yan sa mga likod-likod din natin, and then the blepharospasm. Yung blepharospasm po, yung parang pumipitek, you'll be able to see that. Yun yung sinasabi ko po kanina na, um, parang nafe-feel ko nga po when I look at the mirror, pumipitek. Opo, kasi it's already trying to signal the system of the body or your eye muscles. You can only try uh, running po for siguro three hours or four hours ng diri-diretsyo. Kung hindi po tayo mag-cramps, it's the same thing. Our eyes or the muscles of the leads will also try to complain to you, pagod na po ako, I'm super tired na, you have to take a break. And vitamin B is very, very important para po matulungan na mag-function well, not only our lead muscles, but also the back, alam mo po yun, and other muscles of the body. Um, this, is, uh, this one's are other recommendations that uh, I feel I should be discussing with you also. So we have to wear appropriate corrective lenses to avoid eye strain and relax your eyes whenever we're working with our digital screens. There are a lot of brands now which we can make use of to address the UVA, UVB, and your blue light. These ones are very, very important. Uh, if you try to look at it now, researches are still going on po talaga kung ano po ba talaga yung pinaka-harm na nagagawa ng blue light when it comes to the retina. Uh, by the way, when we talk about blue light, hindi nyo po nakikita na blue talaga yan. In the visible light spectrum, we have the Roy G. Beam. Nakita po nila with research na yung ilaw po in between your blue and your indigo, in between that one is the harmful blue light. Bakit po? Um, initially, they were able to see na nagkukosya ng premature na aging talaga ng retina. 
tinitignan pa po nila with uh, macular degeneration, with cataract, kung meron po ba siyang direct link talaga. You have to remember, hindi naman po tayo po pwedeng maglabas ka agad-agad. This one's computers and digital screens have been there since the early 80s, but it will really take time. So it won't hurt us if we try to keep, uh, protect our eyes pa rin po. You have to make use of protective eyewear to shield your eyes from harmful blue light, uh, provide comfortable vision, and maintain a good night's sleep. Yun po yung sinasabi ko kanina with the production of your melatonin. That's very, very important. And then parang sunscreen po kasi yan. I think everybody will be agreeing with me uh, when I say na when we go out, we have to make use of sunscreen. And so the eyes also needs the sunscreen with the use of protective lenses. So that's very, very important. Use lubricating eye drops prescribed by your eye care provider to avoid dryness and maintain eye comfort. Ito po yung sinasabi ko. There are times when you just go to the pharmacy, pabili po ako ng certain na brand to relieve yung dryness or to relieve po yung um, itchiness or to relieve the redness. The reason why some of the well-known brands po ng lubricants are no longer over the counter kasi po ang nagiging ugali natin, for example, we're able to relieve po yung symptoms, especially the dryness and then the redness, we don't consult uh, our eye care professionals na. So okay na tayo eh. We make use of this one na continuous na po siya. Um, sometimes, this one sir signals na there's a bigger problem behind. Pupwedeng the redness uh, is caused by increased IOP, which is glaucoma. So if initially we feel relieved, I would still be recommending that um, you kindly try to visit parent to the eye care professionals. If you have an ophthalmologist na you always prefer to go to, pwede. Kung meron po kayong optometrist na po, pwede din po ninyong puntahan, pwede din po. Pero kung gusto niyo rin pong puntahan na ka, pwede din. Mas okay. <laughs> ano yun siya? Secondarily, siguro naman, nobody uh, uh, among your students are smoking. So you have to quit smoking. You have to regulate uh, alcohol intake. And then speak up often. When you have issues, I think your guidance counselors, your parents, your teachers are there. You have to speak up. I know it's something which is quite difficult to do. Because speaking in front of you, you would see me do it talaga with my patients. I do it very, very fluently. I scold them and everything. But speaking in front of medyo mas malaking crowd, it would be something which is quite difficult. Um, if you feel comfortable speaking to an aunt, speaking to a teacher, speaking to a sister, we really have to do that one. And then we have to get social. That's very, very important, especially this time when the face-to-face -face is quite limited. Um, Zoom, Zoom meetings are very, very effective for us to learn, to us to get, uh, for us to be uh, well acquainted with the people. Um, I had this incident last Saturday. I had a patient She's around four or five. And then I told her, Anak, what grade are you in? I was super excited. And then she told me, I don't know. She just looked at me. And then she told me, what's the name of your teacher? I was asking her. She told me, my teacher is a computer. So I was really so shocked. I told her, Anak, behind that computer, there's a teacher who's trying to teach you. But I only see, I, I, I only hear, hear her voice. That's what she said. I keep insisting that somebody was there. And then she told me, you know, Peppa Pig, teacher is like Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig is just teaching me what I'm supposed to say and what I'm supposed to do. I, I'm supposed to be doing. But teacher is not a person. Teachers, you have to do something about this one. I was really so surprised about this five-year-old telling me about this. If it's possible that you just uh, set a time, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, five students, introduce yourselves. I really don't know how we're going to do this once because I myself, I'm quite afraid to be exposing these kids to, to social activities. But if that's an effective way for us to introduce ourselves and try to show that, that, we're, that we are persons, I think uh, we're up to letting them know that we are the ones making the modules, we are the ones making the lectures. So... Um, that was one of the wake-up calls, which I, uh, I was able to, to realize that the pandemic is really doing a lot of negative things on our mental health. Good news. Most stress-related eye problems are temporary. Once the stressors contributing to this are addressed, 
So I already gave you some tips. It's all up to you to follow. If you believe me, you can follow them. At least you'll be a lot more relieved. With the lubricants, one of my friends told me she has been working really, really hard and trying to monitor her daughter and how to do her, her modules, but I reminded her not to do it. And then she was telling me everything was foggy, everything was fuzzy. I told her um, how many hours I asked. I did the teleconsult and then she told me, I sent her the lubricants and then voila, everything was okay. She told me it was magic. So uh, whenever you have issues like that one, teleconsults are also open. So you can try to message your doctors and how they can be able to address these problems. Um, a very, very important saying, which I tried, I tried to, to ponder on and uh, started to realize was very, very useful for our life uh, as of now is this. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at changes. If we look at things negatively, everything will be negative. But if we look at things positively, everything, everything will, start to, uh, will start to be very, very positive. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope um, you learned something from this talk this morning. Uh, thank you to the Berkeley family for coming up with such a wonderful program for the children and the parents. Thank you very much, Dr. Roma. We, we really, really appreciate uh, your lecture this morning. Actually, po, I have a mental list, a checklist po of what to um, <laughs> prepare or even ask tapos po um nun pong you were uh, discussing all of this na in sa 2020 o yung posture patay x x <laughs> we are all guilty with that everybody's guilty with that educators yes, are very po. guilty with that <laughs> yes po and then um true to what you said as well po a while ago that um once we sit down in front of our screen we don't want to get up or even get our water or even eat kasi po the momentum will be lost yeah so exactly that's the term the momentum oh po na, i just have to finish this wait five minutes five minutes and then later on naku tapos na po yung five minutes lunch na wala <laughs> water sa body thank you very much um Dr. Roma. so um to our participants our parents and our teachers um please reserve your questions for later um we will have our Q&A after uh, um, Miss Jewel's talk. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Roma. So allow me to just reshare my screen and then to also welcome our um, next speaker. May I call back Mambona to introduce Miss Jewel to us. Mambona? Yes. Uh, thank you, Em. Yeah. So uh, our second uh, speaker holds a degree in Bachelor of Science in Psychology from St. Louis University. She is currently pursuing her master's in psychology and is expected to graduate this coming December. A licensed, psych licensed psychometrician, she is currently the assistant head of office of St. Louis University Sunflower Child and Youth Wellness Center. She had held posts in the Academy of SLU's Stella or School of Teacher Education and Liberal Arts from being a clinical supervisor to agency field supervisor, and finally, as program coordinator, all under the umbrella of the Department of Psychology. She co-authored and presented a paper on experiences and motivations of Filipino adults in pseudo relationships during the 53rd annual convention of the Psychological Association of the Philippines. Our speaker has also conducted various seminars, trainings, and workshops with a vast array of topics ranging from psychosocial wellness, handling disclosures of sexual abuse, mental health awareness, Teenage Development, Parents Congress, and the like, all focused mainly on the care and protection of one's self, children, and others. She has more than enough experience and knowledge to share with us about our second topic on emotional health 
for parents and employees. Join me in welcoming Ms. Jewel Minlori Llanillo Villanueva. Good morning. Thank you so much, Ma'am Bona, for that very detailed introduction. Medyo na pressure po ako dun sa introduction ninyo, actually. Thank you so much po. But yeah, it's it's good to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And um, it's my pleasure to meet all of the uh, parents of the Berkeley community. Hello po. Good morning. Medyo, this is my first time to talk sa Berkeley. And I would like to, again, um, thank Ms. Mers and um, Sir Astudillo for, for inviting us. Okay, so for this morning, I will be talking about, let me share my screen. Okay. Wait lang po, ay, tago ko lang yung para makita ko. Yeah, okay. So I will be talking about the emotional health for parents and employees. So um, I think this one, hindi masyadong natatakal yung emotional health, especially for parents and employees. Lately, kasi all of the research are all directed to the stress ng mga students. So I think we we deserve, parents and, and teachers and school employees deserve din na magkaroon din sila ng, ano, ng, ng pansin, kahit naman konti lang. Okay? So, okay. So, last January 30, if you remember last year, the World Health Organization declared that the COVID-19 is already a global health emergency. And in March... Last year also, 2020, our administration um, declared the first ever community quarantine. So we are in this quarantine for 21 months and counting already. So I would just like to ask our parents, our um, school employees, how are you? You can, uh, ano po, you can unmute yourselves if you want to answer. Po. So how are you now? How are you today? 20 months na tayong may pandemic, may quarantine. Okay, papulo ba tayo? Oh, sorry. So may nagsabi po, we miss our students. Oh yes, and I'm sure your students miss you also. Hindi na sila ano, they cannot wait to have face-to-face -face classes anymore. Okay, so yeah, I hope everyone's still okay despite us being in limited mobility, may mga restrictions for 21 months already. Okay? So, um, so the World Health Organization said that the mental health impact of the pandemic will be long-term and far-reaching. Here in the Philippines, in the National Center for Mental Health um, stated that for their hotline, they received as many as 700 a month during calls, 700 calls a month during the first few months of the lockdown. And this further increased by five times in the third quarter of last year. So from 700, uh, they received 1,400 calls a month and then peaking at 1,600 calls this March lang. So the primary reasons for calling were anxiety and depression, which was, you know, which were really exacerbated by the pandemic. Um, for my nation, my nation is a mental health uh, firm that, that do research. So they had a study of 6,000 respondents and 53% said they worry about health risk and financial pressures. These are all adults. So respond, their respondents were experiencing weakened focus, uh, low levels of self-confidence, sleeping problems, and they ex experience less pleasure in activities they normally enjoy. So um, these respondents all of them are workers, so 13% of these, they took a leave of absence due to mental health problems, while 35% had productivity issues, losing an average of two hours daily. So, diyan po yung effect ng pandemic to our workers. Okay. Then, so, now, what are the effects of the pandemic to parents and school employees? So, for teachers, teachers have suffered so much stress from having to adapt in record time, might, might I add, na parang bigla-bigla nag-cancel ang classes and then after a few months, we need to go back to school, pero this time online. So, yun ang nagbigay ng isang napaka- stress for parents. This has all been accompanied by symptoms of anxiety, depression, and sleep disturbance as a consequence of increased workload resulting from home teaching. Initially, we, we, we said na that not just for teachers, even yung mga um, work from home parents na parang iniisip na, natin nun, uy, work from home, maraming medyo hindi, hindi stressful yung, yung time. 
Pero little did we know na mas stressful pa pala siya kesa sa you go to your workplace talaga in actual um, work there. So, there. Okay. So, for parents naman, um, our home na transform na siya na it has become the office, it has become the classroom, and even sometimes yung gym. So, many parents are struggling to not only keep their children occupied, but also, syempre yung mga um, house uh, duties din natin. Uh, we have the overseeing schooling ng ating mga children. Work, of course, we... we, we some parents naman, uh, they, do, they did not stop working. Um, even grocery shopping, they do it online and perform all the other daily necessities of family life. So at the same time, the parents also um, had to deal with children who are reacting to stress by acting out or regressing to behaviors long outgrown. Or yung sinasabi na, na nagre-regress into a younger behaviors, not um, applicable for their actual age. So this one... Um, aside from the workers having burnout, ang parents din po pala, nakaka-experience din siya ng parental burnout na sinasabi. So, this one, it has been around since the 1980s, itong parental burnout na ito. So, Isabel Roscam and Moira Mikolajak um, define parental burnout as an exhaustion syndrome characterized by feeling physically and mentally overwhelmed by their role as parents. So the ever-shifting demands of parent of uh, the par pandemic to parents are leading to stress, anxiety, and depression, and not to mention the economic hardship for those forced to leave their jobs or uh, forced to leave their jobs to care for their children. So there. Um, usually, yung burnout is associated with yung, yung um, high-flying careers. However, yun nga, in parenting, applicable din po siya. So, but the difference between the two is you can resign from a job, di po ba? You can remove yourself from the situation that causing you so much stress. Pero pag sa parenting, alam namang mag-resign po tayo sa mga anak natin, di po ba? Sa family natin. I think we, we cannot do that. So, this is why it's so important to recognize the signs of yung impending na parental burnout na sinasabi nila and um, to put strategies to, to deal with yung um, feelings or yung symptoms before a full-blown bur burnout happens. Okay? So, ano nga ba yung mga, mga uh, symptoms ng parental burnout? So, some red flags include short temper. So, you may be uh, very impatient na, mabilis kayong magalit. You may snap at your children or your partner and yung uh, things that you would have to let go na kaya mo in the past kahit konti lang eh, na pwede mong palagpasin. Ngayon, hindi na. You, you react to it agad. You also have, you, you also experience yung limited tolerance or yung um, lahat ng maliliit na bagay eh, na iirita ka na. Uh, wala ka ng patience with your tasks, your children, or other people. Some also experience foggy brain, yung memory problems, yung lack of mental clarity or inability to focus. Heightened sensitivity, your emotions and environment. Um, this can include become, uh, becoming sensitive to very bright lights, loud sound, crowded places, yung mga yun, um, as well as yung crying up without reason, parang ganun. Uh, disruptions in sleep patterns. So we don't uh, complete na yung required uh, hours of sleep for us. We experience headache, confusion, upset stomach, anxiety, depression, feelings of isolation. Um, in the sense, yung feelings of, uh, of isolation is yung sense of being alone, even if you are with other people. So yeah. And then the breakdown of communication with others, meaning um, because of isolation or lack of yung yeah, yung short, short temper mo yun na hindi na hindi ka na nakakapag-communicate na effectively with other people and then some also use starts using food drugs or alcohol to cope okay so yan all of this all of this um uh, anxiety that the pandemic has brought the intense situation contributes to the increased levels of stress. So when stress levels are high and ability to cope is low, it's during times like this that we need to be actively involved in our own self-care. So ano nga ba yung self-care na sinasabi nila? Okay? But before we go to the self-care, so what is stress? So stress is a physiological and psychological reaction. So it's something we experience when we feel overwhelmed or under threat. So it's common 
and experienced by many of us. So yun naman ang affair kay, kay stress, wala siyang pinipiling tao. So lahat nakaka-experience nakaka, nakaka nito. In short bursts of stress, it can help us to be motivated and deal with daily life demands. However, yung stress na prolonged, it's unhelpful na. It can affect our mood, our self-esteem, our relationships, and how much we function. So there's two kinds of stress. So the use stress versus distress. Oh, um, um, distress. So not all stress are bad. So we have to uh, remember that we have good stress and bad stress and both have different effects in our mind and body. So yung use stress is the good stress. So this one motivates us. It helps us focus. It improves our performance. It feels exciting and it doesn't last long. For the bad stress naman, this one, this is the kind of stress that causes anxiety, can be overwhelming, it feels unpleasant, it decreases our performance, and con can continue for a long time. Okay? So what are the signs of stress? Um, we all experience stress differently in different situations. So there are people, meron yung iba na, um, hindi pa nila na nare-recognize agad. So, stress can both affect um, emotionally and physically and it can affect the way we behave. So, for emotional, uh, some signs of stress include irritable, aggressiveness, impatient, anxious, um, depressed, unable to enjoy life. So, all of, of those things. Behavioral manifestations of stress naman includes finding it hard to make decisions, we are constantly worrying. We avoid speak at our skin. Yung mga yun. For the physical signs of stress, there's shallow breathing or hyperventilating. We might have panic attack, muscle tension, blurred eyesight or sore eyes. As a doc have said a while ago, so isang ano rin yun sa, sa eyesight natin, yung, yung um, stress and anxiety. Sexual problems such as losing interest in sex or being unable to enjoy sex. We feel tired all the time. We have headaches and lahat ng mga aches sa ating katawan. We have high blood pressure, indigestion, or heartburn. We can also um, experience constipation or diarrhea or feeling sick, dizzy, or fainting. Stress also impacts our social life. So it also not just affect you, but also affect your family, friends, and colleagues. Okay. Um, we may have, if this happens, we have difficulty negotiating uh, our relationship with other people. We tend to isolate ourselves. We feel frustrated and we feel okay. Spiritual also, we, have, we might lose our meaning, our, our sense of meaning in life, lose our faith. Lose of direction. We have doubts. We start. We start to have doubts and question God or any higher being that we um, we believe in, and we are we tend to be unforgiving. Then minsan, so yun. So yun nga. Eto yung sinasabi nila na self care. I know na this self care is um it's been thrown all over ngayon, especially ngayong pandemic. But we 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 need to understand. Ano nga ba yung sinasabi nilang self care? So. Ang self-care is the ability of individuals, families, and communities to promote and maintain health, prevent disease, and to cope with illness and disability with or without the support of a health care provider. Okay, so we can, um, if, if, if we tend to um, feel stressed or anxious or even depressed, some people would, would seek out yung um, help ng professionals. Other people naman, they, they can with them, na by themselves lang, parang ganun. Okay? So, there are seven pillars of self-care. So the first one is um, yung mental. So the mental pillar. So mental self-care is about cultivating a healthy mindset through mindfulness and curiosity. The second one is yung emotional or yung... Um, this one involves taking care of your heart with healthy coping strategies. So in emotional uh, self-care, we tap into, into this pillar by um, tapping into this pillar and makes us understand ourselves more and better deal with challenges and setbacks. And we can develop yung healthy emotional responses to stress or even anxiety or even to a difficult situation that, that comes, that, that we encounter. The next 
pillar is yung physical. This involves taking care of our body with exercise, nutrition, and uh, proper sleep. Okay, so when we practice activities for our physical well-being, we increase our energy level and boost our self-esteem. For the environmental pillar, this one involves taking care of the spaces and places around us. So the more we take care of our immediate environment, the more it will help us to thrive and feel a sense of belonging kung nasaan man tayo. Next pillar is yung, oops, sorry, spiritual. So spiritual care involves activities or practices that give a sense of meaning to your life. So we can dedicate time um, to spiritual health care. This can help us find more meaning in life. It can feel, uh, help feel us for us to feel more grounded and to develop a sense of belonging. Okay, in life. And then for the recreational pillar, um, this one involves making time for hobbies, fun, activ fun activities, and new experiences. This one is important. Uh, yung recreation is very important because it lets us get away with yung pressures from our to-do list. And um, this, one tends to, this one gives us the, the opportunity to just simply enjoy the pressure that life has to offer. And then the, the last pillar is yung social. So social care involves building relationships with regular connection and healthy boundaries. Now, we have to remember that yung self-care is all about, even if it's all about us, it's important na we connect with other human beings on a regular basis. So yun, social care um, means we have to cultivate yung healthy relationship and connecting with other people who gets us, who understands us, and we seek out positive social connections to help us create a sense of belongingness and um, acceptance. Okay, so seeing all of these pillars of self care, um, this this might be overwhelming. So you we might think na kailangan natin magkaroon ng balance sa lahat ng self care pillars na ito. But you know um. We don't need to to focus on that. So, ang pwede natin gawin is we we evaluate ourselves and see kung anong area yung kailangan nating pagtuunan muna ng pagsin for the meantime. And then after that, if if we have addressed yung yung pillar na yon, and then we can move on to the other areas. So, hindi okay lang na hindi mo pagsabay sabay yung lahat. Kung baga, we have you have to evaluate kung what do you need to take care more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, there are several self-care myths na sinasabi nila kasi may mga nagsasabing iba na yung self-care, napaka-selfish napaka naman nito. Inuuna pa niya yung sarili niya kaysa sa mga anak niya, kaysa sa family niya. So, here are some self-care myths. So, self-care is just about pampering yourself. That's the first one. So, we have to remember na it's so much more than pampering. Okay, so it's so much more than going to the salon, having a haircut, doing your... um massage, your manicure siguro, or pedicure, or having a shopping spree. So, self-care is more than more than about, uh, more than pampering. So, it's about staying fit and healthy, uh, being aware of what depletes us, and taking steps to replenish our mental and physical health. And it's about treating ourselves as kindly as you would treat others, Okay. We can also incorporate other activities activities to replenish our body, mind, and spirit. So yun yung mga kailangan na activities na kailangan uh, na um, directed towards self care. Okay. Next myth is, eto na yung sinasabi ko. Self care is indulgent and or selfish. So I would just like to ask if you are not taking of your taking care of yourself, paano ka makakapag take care ng ibang tao, di ba? If you are stressed overwhelmed or burned out, we certainly cannot do this or for our loved ones. So we have to remember that we cannot serve from an empty vessel. Okay? Uh, third myth, uh, they say that self-care is expensive. Actually, self-care is a mindset. So it, it doesn't need to be um, expensive. It doesn't mean that you have to jet off to another uh, country or out of town or you go to luxury spa parang ganun um it's not it's not that 
in fact, minsan nga, it's not um, about buying anything at all. Parang ganun. So, yeah. Yun. Um, fourth myth is self-care is time-consuming. So, it doesn't need to take a lot of time. Self-care doesn't need to take a lot of time. Later on, we will see na pwedeng five minutes of, of, um, of your time in a day, makakagawa ka na ng self-care. Okay? Next one, self-care requires sticking to a strict routine. So, well, we all know naman na routines are important. They help us ensure na we get yung most important things done. Um, however, routines will be just as effective when we allow for flexibility. So, no need to be strict about the type of self of self-care activities that we do. We have to pay attention to what we need and adjust your self-care activities and routine as you need to. Next myth is self-care is anything that makes you better. But you know, sometimes, di ba, sabi na nga nila, yung, the things that make us feel better in the moment, in the long run, there's other things that make us worse, di ba? So self-care is about knowing the difference between what we want and what we need. So be mindful about what we really need. So, we ask ourselves, does this nourish me? Does this calm me? Does this recharge me? So if all your answers are yes, doon sa questions na yon, then by all means, do the self-care. Okay? Last myth is self-care can wait. So, you know, self-care is not a treat and it's not optional. Okay? We have to give our self-permission to practice self-care. So, yun nga, ang sabi nila, if not now, kailan? Diba? Sabi nga ni Ma'am um, ni Ma Merce kanina, as simple as drinking water, self-care yun. Pero minsan, nakakalimutan, di ba? And then, naglaps na. Parang ganun. So, we have to be very uh, mindful na kailangan, kung pwede natin ising it in, in between our activities, ang self-care, we do it. Okay? okay? So, yeah. So, why is self-care important? It reduces or eliminates anxiety and depression. It reduces stress. It improves concentration. Minimizes frustration and anger. Uh, increase happiness, improve energy, it reduces heart disease, stroke, and cancer. It helps keep us in tune with our higher power, and it helps us realize our meaning in life. Okay, so no one, we have to remember that no one is immune to stress. So it can be very effective to manage stressors. Okay, so now if we uh, practice self care, this promotes yung resiliency in us. Okay, so ano nga ba yung, yung resilience? It's the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, or significant sources of stress. So um, st stress refle uh, resilience reflects the ability to bounce back from difficult experiences. Um, resilience means uh, we can beat the odds. It transforms one's emotional and physical pain into something more positive. And we move from being a victim to being a survivor and even to becoming a thriver. So as, our, as yung sinab nakalagay doon sa picture, so ang resilience is yung, yung um, belief na everything na difficult um, experiences shall pass. So these two shall pass. Okay? And so, ano ba ang itsura ng resilient individuals? Or, or what do resilient individuals do? So, they are realistic and optimistic about life. Realistically optimistic about life. So, in tune sila kung ano talaga yung, yung um, gusto nila. And they have realis realistic expectations. So, they engage in goal setting. They demonstrate a sense of self-efficacy and sense of personal control. Uh, they tend to look at the brighter side of, of things. They find meaning and purpose in life. They make a gift of their survival to others. Uh, maybe in in way na they, they help other people. Yung mga ganun. They stay calm even when under pressure. They take actions designed to address stressful events. Um, they take incremental purposeful actions, willing to seek help and willing to join with others. And they help other people. Okay. So how can we be more resilient? So we have to practice optimism. You know, we have to remember that whatever hardship that we are do doing, uh, we can make it as an opportunity to grow and to learn. So we have to remember our successes also. So we have already overcome hard times. For sure, we can do it again. Uh, we can also re rewrite our life to be more resilient. The way we see ourselves changes when... Uh, the way we see ourselves change the way we see the world. So if we look at ourselves negatively, then um, all things in life 
for you in the world, in your environment, will also be negative then. So we have to change that um, frame of mind. Uh, we can also lean on others. Sabi nga nila, it's not, um, it's not, it's fine to, to, to ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. Uh, actually, asking for help is one way to show your strength. Parang ganun. So, a solid group of friends and family is vital in times of crisis. So, we don't, don't personalize failure also. We should stop um, blaming ourselves. So, there are many factors to ed every adverse situation. Hindi lang tayo. Okay? So, it's not our fault. Give something to others. Um, helping others increases our own strength and empathy. Uh, we manage stress. So, you know, stress won't go away. It's just that, I know, it's how we react to it. So treat stress as a stimulus and give yourself breaks. And get out of your comfort zone. So let's put ourselves in situations that present a challenge since this will make us stronger. Okay? So to help parents cope with yung parenting burnout, um, these are some tips. So acknowledge your emotions. It's normal to feel fearful, anxious, or stressed right now. Um, you can discuss your experiences with relatives or friends who, who you feel close to and you can whom you can trust. Parang um, if you continue to experience uh, these problems, then try siguro consulting professionals, yung, uh, mental health professionals. Okay. We can also set boundaries. So Especially now, na nasa work from home tayo, yung boundaries, there's really a thin line na between um, work life and home life, especially sa mga work from home mom. So, um, it makes it more difficult to get things done or it, it, it's more difficult to disconnect from work, yung, yung setup na work from home. So, to help, we can designate siguro a, a specific area to work in, or specific area for your children to do their assignments. Parang, para lang may delineation na, okay, if I am here, I am doing work. If we are in the assignment area ng mga children, it means you are um, spending time with your children. Parang ganun. Uh -huh. There, uh, we can also establish a routine. So, but now it's unrealistic. Medyo it's unrealistic to, to establish a routine. But it's important, especially ngayon. Na, ano, na, na during this stressful time. Pero um, routines kasi it helps fam family members cope with stress and be more resilient. Okay. Maybe we can try to, if yung, na, yung routine natin before, pre-pandemic na disrupt, this time siguro we can bring it back by making siguro yung schedule. You post yung schedule ninyo. Uh, in your refrigerator or in, in an area where everyone can see it and then you try as much as possible to follow yung routine. So for example, 7 to 8 a.m. is breakfast and then after that, eh, siguro yung sa school, online school ng mga bata and for, for the parents who work from home, siguro parang ganon. Okay? And then, um, hmm. communicate with supervisors and co-workers for the working uh work from home parents so mm, you know we can we can ano, we can explain to them na aside from working is you are also the parents are also supervising yung online schooling ng children and hopefully our supervisors our uh, bosses will understand and will give us a leeway kahit konting ano lang kahit konting um ano tawag nito parang uh, yeah, leeway sa ano sa sa time in in working. Siguro you can you can siguro merong an tawag nito yung parang um, arrangement na okay. I cannot accept calls in the morning but in the afternoon I can accept calls parang ganun. Okay? Also, we can share hindi can. We have to share responsibilities with our partners. So or other uh, person siguro na living at home with us na yun um mag-share ng responsibility so one might oversee yung schooling ng bata the other one might you know go go to to run errands or cook for their their um food or even clean the house okay practice self care so ano nga ito na naman yung self care na sinasabi nila so later on we will see kung ano yung mga self care uh, ways that we can do so Yung self-care, it's not just for you. You can do it for um, everyone in the family. So we have to remember din na sometimes 
most of the time, you and the other uh, members of the family need to have alone time every day. You know, just be with, but just be with yourself. Um, you can take a walk, siguro, enjoy a long shower, or just sit and do nothing. Parang ganun. Okay? And then, practice self-compassion. So, if you cannot concentrate um, or let, you know, you can, wag ka muna masyadong mag, mag, um, magalit kung nakita mo na yung bahay ay medyo magulo, medyo ma, madumi. Okay, let it slide muna. During this time, just during this stressful time, it's important to go easy on your children and on ourselves. Okay? So, for some self-care tips, so if you remember po yung seven pillars of self-care kanina, so these are just some examples for each pillar. So for the mental self-care, we can meditate, write in a journal, engaging our brain in a new way. So for example, siguro doing uh, puzzles, uh, um, or Sudoku or crossword puzzles, yung mga ganun. Writing a brain dump list. So brain dump list po is a simple technique that help you declutter or empty our minds and thoughts. So we just have to write every little thing that's in our mind and thoughts. So you can uh, get a notebook and that's your brain brain dump notebook. Parang ganun. Take an intentional break away from technology or the internet. Okay. For the emotional self-care, watch a deep movie um, listen to your favorite songs, write down positive affirmations, asking for help when you need it, setting boundaries to protect your time and energy. Okay? Physical self-care, eating meals at regular times. Um, dapat don't skip meals and as much as possible, dapat kung ano yung, ano yung consistent yung, yung oras ng breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Drink more water, taking vitamins daily, getting 7 to 8 hours of sleep, trying a new workout or going to the gym. Although ngayon medyo mahirap ang gym, so sa bahay na lang yung gym natin, we can check YouTube kung ano yung mga pwedeng gawin na um, workout. For the environmental self-care, sim as simple as arranging our workspace to be more comfortable, exploring somewhere new, kahit siguro um, dito lang tayo, hindi tayo lumalabas sa, 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 sa Baguio, dito... Kunwari, as simple as going to Santa Bang Park, ang hindi nyo napuntahan dito sa Baguio, you can do that. Decluttering your living space. So as Marie Kondo said, kailangan nyo uh, tanungin sa sarili nyo, does, still park, does this still spark joy? Pag hindi na, then you have to let go. Going outside for a walk. Um, do activities that appeal to your five senses. For example, light a candle, put on comfortable clothes, sip a warm drink, or put on your favorite uh, music playlist. Okay. For spiritual care, spending time in nature. If you believe in astrology or in tarot card reading, then you can do that. Identifying our values and what's meaningful to you. Volunteering or contributing to a cause that you believe in and connecting to a higher power, whatever that means to you. Okay. For rec recreational self-care, taking time for hobbies and creative activities or if, if ano, wala kang hobby, then I guess it's 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 time to to um, discover a new hobby. And then going on ad, an adventure by yourself or with others, although ito hindi masyado kasi meron pa tayong social distancing na mga um, fina-follow. Taking time to do absolutely nothing and enjoying it. So if you like to just sit down and lay or lay down, then you can do that. Playing board games or video games, switching up your regular daily routine, for social self-care, uh, we can spend time with people whose company we enjoy. Simply calling or texting or chatting with our relatives or FaceTiming with our relatives is a self-care. So we can write a letter to a friend. So this time, siguro hindi na chat-chat. Uh, let's bring back yung pen pal style. Okay, so talking to a support group and finding a community to contribute to, whether online or offline. Okay, so now, if you are feeling siguro low or down, you can have a mental health check. So you can ask yourself, how are you feeling? When did you last eat a whole meal? Yung mga yan. So these are things, uh, questions for mental health check. So other uh, activities for self-care. So when we feel stressed, we can sip a hot cup of tea, go for a walk, put down our phone, meditate. Uh, relax in a warm bath or shower. So these things. So there are a lot of uh, self care tips in the internet. If you if you would um, research, marami po doon. Okay, yeah. 
So we feel anxious also. We journal about our day, listen to music. When we feel afraid, we can ask for help. We can um, pray and tell God our fears. Breathe deeply, as, as simple as breathing deeply is already considered a self-care. So as I've said a while ago, five minutes lang, pwede po natin gawin itong mga to. Okay? So when we feel sad, we can clean our space. Yun yung, yun yung uh, coping natin. Write down our feelings or read a book or better yet, cry it out. Okay? It's okay to cry and um, express our emotions. Okay, so other ways to take a break. So ito tong mga to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put on some music and dance. If you want, read poetry. Um, stretch. Actually, stretching is, is, um, is a form of self-care. Find a relaxing scent. Or if you are fond of yung mga essential oils, then you can diffuse siguro. Eat a meal in silence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are many ways to self-care. Okay? So in... In, in ending, so I would like to, to share with you this um, quote. So self-care is giving the world the best of you instead of what's left of you. So an empty lantern provides no life. Sel no light, I should say. Self-care is the fuel that allows your light to shine brightly. And last from Eleanor Brown, so rest and self-care are so important. When you take time to replenish your spirit, it allows you to serve from the overflow. As I've said a while ago, you cannot serve from, from an empty vessel. Okay, so thank, that's all for my presentation today. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mom Jewel. Um, we really learned a lot. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to share your experience and knowledge with us. Actually, if I may share then, um, emotional health is really important. We should have to evaluate as well how we think. We should reevaluate how we feel. Um, kasi po, um, ako po personally based on my experience, I doubted a lot of things the past few weeks. Um, ayun po. So kahit tinatanong ako ng mga tao, I keep on telling them, I'm okay. No, I'm okay. I'm just fine. I'm doing well. Yung pong mga ganun na palusot, pero sabi nga po nila, um, huwag nating paniniwalaan na when somebody says they're okay, they're really, really okay. Pero uh, it's just a way for us not to worry them. Pero with um, your presentation, Ma'am Jewel, I saw the importance of really sharing how you feel. Kasi it really unloads the weight that you carry. So there. So um, yes. thank you very much for thank you very much for that. And um, before we proceed uh, to our Q and A, um, of course I think our parents and teachers are still preparing or um digesting all the information from Doc Roma and Mom Jewel. Um, allow me po to welcome or acknowledge the presence po of our um school president. Um, before we also end our program. Mom Charles, thank you very much po for being here. Thank you po. So I think what we'll Yeah, hi Mers. Um good morning to all our parents and all our teachers here with us today. Uh thank you for your support for the past months in all the health mental health activities that the guidance and counseling office have uh, has prepared. Um M also I'd like to congratulate you for the the movie time the family time challenge as well as today's webinar and i'd also like to thank of course uh, mom jewel and uh, mom roma for joining us uh, being part of these programs that we have here in school uh, definitely po no marami pong mapupulot our parents as well as our teachers so th the whole month uh, has been really uh, uh, an eye opener for me as we engage in different activities on mental health and well-being. Just last night po, I was in another, uh, I was in a well-being kwentuhan with uh, some educators in our, in the private ed sector. And there was this, uh, there was something that really hit me. Uh, we usually talk about work-life work balance and that has been the call. But uh, Doc uh, Sheikh Hookson was with us. Uh, the past president of PGCA and also a very active counselor and teacher. And she said 
baka hindi work-life balance. Maybe it's not work-life balance, but work-life harmony. Because at certain periods of our life, uh, sometimes really work demands more or family demands more. And we see that during this pandemic. And now we really see that it's just the one space uh, that we have at home, one space as a school, one space as a, a workplace for uh, the family. So he, her challenge is that daily, of course, we have to evaluate what we will prioritize, what we will uh, really do. So there's no such thing as a 50-50 balance of work and life, but it's harmonizing work and life. So that's the, uh, something that I'd like to share just to add to the inputs of our speakers today. Um, maybe that's really what we need um, and not being reactive to certain stressors, not being reactive to this crisis. Um, yeah, the, the surges continue. The... There's another variant. There will be more challenges. Um, also, in school, there has been a lot of talks about limited face-to-face. -face. So there are more changes that will be happening uh, in the next few months, few years. Um, but we, we remain uh, not to be reactive. Uh, just like the school stands since the beginning of the crisis, we remain to be proactive instead. And um, I'd also like to commend our teachers and parents where I think the community has been very kind to each other throughout this whole pandemic. Uh, we've been really supportive of each other in terms of the programs, even uh, with Project Blink, the support that we give to our students. And I think that's the strength that th this community has. It's the support that we continuously give to each other. And that's what, that's what, that's what keeps us strong at this time. And I think that's really where the resilience of this community comes from. So with that, um, I hope uh, we can send in our questions for our resource speakers today so that we can enrich this, this discussion even more. Thank you very much and good morning to everyone. Thank you very much, Mom Charlize, for being here and for always being supportive to everyone. Thank you, Pa. So there, I am now opening the floor uh, for our question and answer. Please feel free to unmute your microphone or use the chat box. Actually, po, we have one here right now um, from uh, Ma'am Isabel Zulueta. Um, hello, thank you for this. Excited to start self-care instead of online shopping. Uh, Ma'am Joel, for me, po kasi online shopping is also a form yep. of self-care. Over. <laughs> okay po. Noted. Okay. Uh, if you feel stressed, what do you do? Add to cart. Di ba sabi nila yon? Pero wag lang over naman na add to cart na kahit hindi mo kailangan eh, add to cart ka na lang ng add to cart. So, again, self-care is, you know, uh, having to recognize what you need at the moment. Noted po, Ms. Jewel. Okay po, will the slides po be shared in our email? I can, or maybe we can request po from our um, speakers a copy of their slides. I will, um, ano lang siya ng format, I will put it in a PDF format and then send it to you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much po. And then I will be distributing it to our parents and teachers po. Will that be also okay, Dr. Roma, if you can share your presentation? Sure. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Po. Okay. Oh, thank you very much po. So um, to our dear parents and teachers, administrators, um, feel free to unmute your microphones if you have questions or comments or even just an exchange po of ideas what you do at home. Um, this is how I do my self-care. For example, we can share it with the whole group po. So the floor uh, is now open or the Zoom is now open for uh, our Q&A. So there. Um, yes, Ma'am Maricel. Hi, Ma'am. Good morning. Good morning po. Uh, question lang po kay Dr. Roma. Uh, when, uh, very helpful po yung information nyo because I've had the, myself twitching problem with the eye. Yeah. So that was very helpful, your presentation. I want to know your information, Ma'am, as far as your clinic. I had, uh -huh. actually, I had my eyes checked. Even I went to a neuro because of the twitching. 
but I think it might have to do with the eyes. <laughs> I wear both um, contact lenses and glasses. Glasses. Uh, and then I also want to ask where the clinic is because I'm also concerned with the with my three kids since it's been on they've been online for a long time for a while now, and they haven't had an eye checkup uh, mm -hmm. since the pandemic started. So yeah. I don't know. I know the eldest uh, has been wearing glasses before that, but baka nag-change na his prescription. So I want to know where your clinic is and um, uh, I'm sure it's safe, but we don't bring them out kasi ma'am. So I just want to... <laughs> yeah, wait. usually for kids kasi we have them on schedule and then uh -oh. I usually schedule them very early morning, talaga mga 9.30. Uh -oh. So the clinic is located behind Patriotic High School. Okay. okay. It's IBAX Optical Boutique. Okay, ma'am. So yeah, if uh, we, I, I'll get your information so I can set up an appointment and then sure, so I, can, I can bring all three and at least have them check, make sure uh, the other two doesn't need glasses yet or if they do. They also wear those uh, for blue light glasses, but it's not consistent, the two young ones. So I don't know if anything has changed. Yeah, so usually we do counseling for children also. So that's very important. Sometimes they don't believe their parents. So it's a lot better if you bring them over so we can do counseling for them. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, you're Doc. welcome. Thank you, ma'am, Naricel and Doc Roma. Um, any more questions po from our participants this morning? Any questions po? Ako po, may question kay Doc. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> a good morning, Doc. Um, you, you may not remember me, but we went to your clinic with my sister, Attorney Anilio, before with my son and my husband. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Opo. <laughs> Doc, I would just like to ask, is wearing po yung, yung glasses na to protect yung blue light effective? Mm -hmm. talaga, Doc? Yes, it's very effective, especially for UVA, UVB, at saka um, yung sa blue light. But you have to make sure, ha, kasi some are coating only. Yun, uh, yun. yun yun. So makikita mo sometimes, kasi when we do test... I think I'm the Roma po lost. Her oh, connection. Let's I, just wait for uh, a little while, po, for her to um reconnect back to us, po. So um, we, mm hmm, Mom Charis, po, uh, has a message for everyone, po, sa ating chat box. May we ask our parents, po, for suggestions on how we can strengthen our programs on mental health? Tama po, tama. Yes, Mom Marisa, I saw, I saw your. <laughs> I just wanted to share with the group, with the parents and the admin, uh, all the teachers. Recently, we uh, we experienced um, uh, we 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 had COVID uh, patients here in the house. Tapos na po yun. It took about a month to clear everyone. Yes. So for for Mom Jewel, actually, the anxiety was so heavy. I have never felt anxiety before, and then I realized. Oh, so this is how, how it feels. You cannot function. You you really cannot think personally. So I, I think it's very important na for parents, adults, if, if you experience something, you ask for help. Because uh, there are times na you really cannot deal with it on your own or say, yes, I prayed a lot. However, talagang minsan it's too much na you will need help. I, I seek help, I got help, uh, temporary lang naman, kasi we're all okay na. It was just really, the anxiety was very, very heavy. Uh, so, some parents, some people might be going through that and say, kaya ko to. No, sometimes you really need help and it's always good to seek help. And that, that the help from my uh, doctor and sister-in-law, uh, really helped me go through the, the, the stressful two weeks in the house. <laughs> so, um, just want to emphasize na it's okay to seek help, uh, especially from a professional. Kasi we're in a pandemic and it seems like uh, hopefully it will be over soon, but uh, mukhang matatagalan pa naman. But uh, just, just to share that experience na 
anxiety attack is not uh, is uh, is really different talaga. I I felt a different level of anxiety that I've never had before. So uh, always seek uh, professional help if if you need it. That's true, ma'am. And um, siguro I just like to reiterate then na yung feeling of anxiousness, of stress, it's it's a normal reaction because yung pandemic po is an abnormal reaction. And not just you po, it's not just you who feels that way. Everyone who underwent through that, it's the normal reaction po to an abnormal situation. So it's good din po, ma'am, that you sought help. And sometimes din, yeah, they say na, na we can we can pray yung spiritual ano natin, but sometimes we need din yung psychological help din. So it's good it, it's it's good to know, ma'am, that you are all doing okay. Yes. And also, uh, I would like to thank the teachers. I reached out right away to all the department heads and the teachers of the three kids na uh, they didn't stop classes, but I did ask for extra time for to submit their work, and they were very, very helpful naman. So just to let the parents know na that was the first thing I did. Ask, uh, I, Sir Al actually called me. Sabi niya, ma, you know, help me out. And the other teacher sent me an email. Don't worry, ma'am, I'll give you extra, I'll give the, this, your, your child extra time. So I also reach out for the teacher so they know what's going on. And kasi additional stress din na, oh, we have to sub, we have a synchronous pa and I'm dealing with all these things in the house. So it was very helpful that, that the teachers, uh, the staff were also there and they assisted us also and gave us extra time. So thank you po, uh, teachers, Ma'am Sandria, Sir Al, and the other teachers po. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ma'am Marisol, for sharing that one. Actually po, um, if I may also share po, ako din, I just recovered from, <laughs> yes po, um, I just went out ng 16. Um, I'm still at home. I'm still under medication. So actually po, hindi lang siya physical health eh, yung nagiging problema. Um, tama po kayo doon sa, um, anxiety kasi po thankful naman po ako na I'm the only one at home who was uh, or na infect ng virus. So sabi ko po, on set pa lang po na I don't think I feel well. Sabi ko na po, nag-isolate na ako pero um, I don't want to worry muna anyone else. So sabi ko, wait, hintayin ko ng two days. Tapos po biglang nandyan na yung wala ng panlasa. On, our, on my part, ma'am, I was not, I did not be positive in my husband and the I, the anxiety of waiting if any of my kids were, we got exposed to the, the house, uh, a total of six became positive in the house for our helpers and one of them brought it in and the other two are the grandparents. So the anxiety of Making sure all six are okay. The yes, anxiety okay. of magpapositive ba kami? Kasi we were really close, uh, exposed talaga. And we're very yes. close to the grandparents and the kids. So it's all the combination. Kahit na nga hindi ako nagpositive, I felt the anxiety. So I can imagine those who actually became positive, siguro mas grabe pa. So seek help. Yun lang po ang mm -hmm. i-advise ko. Seek help. Uh, teachers, uh, professionals, uh, well, whoever you think can help you. <laughs> yes, po, tama po. So, ayun po, I even opened up na po with Ma'am Charisse, uh, my colleagues here, to just seek support or just to make me feel better. Pero yes. talaga po, speak out. Tama po yung sabi nila, Dr. Roma, or, uh, and Ma'am Jewel po, that you really have to be very much open. Kasi po, dati, um, yung stigma na when we say we have problems with our mental health, iba na po yung connotation to other people. Pero that's not the case now. We have yes. to speak up. We have to educate others to un to let them understand how we feel. This is how it is. Kagaya po yung mga myths na yung myths na yun, ako din po personally as a psych major din po at some point I believe those myths. So really open up po. Open up. So Oh, po. Um, the school, po, our teachers, um, our administrators are very much open. My office, po, in the guidance office, you can feel feel free to message me. Our um, uh, Dr. Roma, uh, Mom Jewel is also part of the Berkeley family now already. So welcome po, to our family. So thank you very much. Po. You can feel uh, 
free uh, message us anytime. So, yun po. Um, thank you very much po, Ma'am Marisol, for sharing. Thank um, you, Ma'am. Thank you po. Um, any more? Ah, ituloy po natin yung naudlot na question ni, ni Ma'am Jewel for Ma'am Roma. Oy. It's okay, Sorry, Ma'am. It's okay, Ma'am. <laughs> Oo. Yeah, it helps. Kaya lagi namin siya na-advocate, especially for sleep. Yun yung sinasabi ko, uh, the production of your melatonin sa gabi. So very restful kasi ang sleep mo. Yun yung isa namin tinatarget eh. Diba sometimes they do overtime talaga or you people who work at home, sobrang overtime na. Yun, makakatulong talaga siya kasi the unwanted blue light won't be able to enter. Tapos yung normal talaga na circadian movement ng uh, katawan uh, will go into work so you'll be able to sleep. Pero syempre, ibang kaso pag ang dami mo iniisip, ma'am. Iba din yon So, additional lang po siya. It will keep the eyes well protected. Tapos yun nga yung sinasabi namin kanina na with macular degeneration kasi si blue light. Um, may mga scans kasi silang ginagawa as of now. They try to subject yung scans talaga ng retina. And you'll be able to see, for example, ilang oras ka laging exposed sa computers or sa screens mo, nag age yung retina faster. So, it can help. It can help po talaga yung screens. Basta yung hindi coated, Doc. Basta yung... Yeah. Alam mo yun, kasi minsan the price is parang sobrang dun sila nagre-rely. Eh, it's really very difficult for us then. Kasi hindi man ako manufacturer. And then this once, we try to see to it na before we bring it out, we've tested it. At the same time, FDA approved na siya. And then it went through research. So, hindi ko naman makukontrol yan at hindi ko po kayang pantayan whatever the resellers are doing po online. But uh, be rest assured na pag ni-release po namin sa inyo, sa amin po yan ha, and my other co-doctors who, whom I supply, uh, we check it po talaga. We check it before releasing. Thank you so much, Doc. Kasi minsan nga, although 2020 pa naman, Doc, yung vision ko, pero kasi all day, nakasarap po kami kasi sa computer. Kaya oh. sabi ko, I think I need that. Ganun nga po ako eh. Thank you, Doc. Thank you po. You're welcome po. Thank you po. Um, we have here from Ma'am Marinil Rivera. We really appreciate the activities the School in the Guidance Office sent us. Um, these kinds of webinars are really helpful. Thank you very much po, Ma'am Marinil. Actually, Ma'am, the success of our programs, not only the Guidance Office, but the programs initiated by the teachers and our library very, very soon uh, will not be successful without you, our parents. So thank you very much po, for your support as well. Um, we have here another book from Ma'am Ra'a Cruz. Good morning. The topics today are very important and relevant. Thank you very much. I hope the school can have a mental health webinar with the students as the audience to be able to speak to them in their language. Definitely, Ma'am Ra'a, we uh, will be uh, fixing also their webinars po for our students. Yes po. Okay, that's on the line po. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Ra'a. Um, do we have any more suggestions po from our parents? Um, kagaya po ni Ma'am Ra'a, webinar for students. How about the others? Do you have any questions, suggestions, so that we can improve our programs po in school as well? Are there any more po? Merce, yeah, I just yes, like to ask sana si Ma'am Jewel. Ma'am Jewel, um, we saw that um, in some schools, a practice is uh, building a psychological first aid team. Yes, paano po ba yun? How does that work? And as a school, paano po namin siya pwedeng gawin? Actually po, kakatapos lang po namin kahapon mag... Uh, there's a difference po kasi yung psych... Um, psychological first aid and psychosocial processing. So for us po yung psycho psychological first aid, yun po yung immediately after a disaster. And then yung psychosocial processing, that's the more in-depth po na um anong tawag dito parang kamustahan or usapan na. And that's where yung psychosocial processing, that's where we process po yung traumatic event that a person has underwent. We, you can po siguro kasi it's giving PSP or PFA is not just ano naman po, limited to those who are licensed um, professionals now. So for example, psychologists or nurses. Kasi anyone can do it po basta po mag-undergo siya ng training. Yes po. I see, I see. So 
for a school, both components have to be present. I, um, I would suggest po sa school setting, mas better po yung PSP, psychosocial processing. I see, I see. Yeah, kasi um, just pulling, just uh, thinking about yung sharing ni Ma'am Maricel and ni Mers, no? Um, I know that ni naman siya disaster, no? But with the crisis that we have right now, we have a lo- have had a lot of families also who had uh, similar experiences to them. And we were, kami ni M, we were thinking about ways, paano kaya natin sila? How do we, uh, kumbaga, support them at this time? So, nakita ko yon, nakita ko yung uh, about uh, P, uh, ano ba yun? Psychological first aid tsaka PSP. Mm-hmm. Alright. Actually po, yung, yung, yeah, y- y- yung pandemic today is not really considered a disaster pero it's a traumatic event po. So for PSP, you can, you can do that po. You can process yung experiences of, for example, parents who under, who, who had, who got positive for COVID, for, for employees or even for um, your students po. You can do that po. Um, you just have to be trained on how to do it. Okay, uh, may second session na tayo, um, Ma'am Jewel, regarding uh, that. So, we, ano po, we give po trainings for psychosocial processing. I see, I or see. Instead po, you can just send a letter po sa email po ng Sunflower. We, actually, we finished po yesterday from the SWD din. Psychosocial processing for children, teens, and adults po. Sige, sige, we'll do that as well so that we can yes. convene a team in school to be able to support yes. our teachers, parents, and also our students. Thank you very much. Send an email po. Sige, sige, salamat, salamat. Yes, you're welcome po. Thank you very much, Ma'am Joel. Um, there are there any more questions po coming from our teachers? Do you have any questions po? Um, our Ma'am Roma, baka kayo din po may question. Ah, nasa clinic na po si Ma'am Roma. Nag-change venue. <laughs> so there. Do you have any more questions po? Okay. So if there are no more questions or if you have follow-up questions po, um, feel free to message me po sa guidance at berkeley.edu.ph if you would like po um to request also the con- the contact details or emails of Miss Jewel for, or and Doc Roma uh, for your questions or even consultations po um feel free to message us and then I will connect you to them po. okay so um there we go um on behalf of the members uh, of the management committee uh of Berkeley School, I want to thank our excellent speakers, Dr. Roma Gonzalez and Ms. Jewel and Julio Villanueva for your insightful presentation. May you both continue to be safe and guided in your journey to providing safer and healthier venues for people in their quest for a better lifestyle. Listening is only half of the journey, their parents, teachers, and everyone here present towards the attaining attainment of a healthy mental state. The crucial task is working for and acting towards the set of parameters to be fully mentally healthy amidst the critical situations surrounding us. We challenge all of you to mindfully act on everything you heard today. So that wraps up our wellness webinar. Thank you very much for um, joining us this morning. And also, allow me po to take um, this opportunity to thank all the parents. Kagaya po nang sinabi ko kanina, the success uh, of the programs will, or yung pong parang success nga um, ng mga programs namin will not be this great without your help po. And also our administrators, our teachers who are present here, thank you very much po. And also our academic heads, Ma'am Sandria, thank you very much. Sir June and also Ma'am Bon a while ago and Sir Al, uh, Ma'am Marielle or Rosa and of course Ma'am Charisse. And then um, hindi ko po makakalimutan ang ating administrative team who helped me uh, when I was not able to facilitate activities uh, personally. Thank you very much. 
Ang Marielle Salomon. Um, of course, Sir Dune is also part of the team na din. Um, Ma'am Janet Baya, thank you very much po. And also our um, librarian, um, Sir James Gole Cruz. So, um, those who supported po our mental health celebration programs from our uh, movie treat. Ayan, I hope you enjoy those movies po. And also yung ongoing natin, our family time challenges. Thank you po for those who sent na their pictures and videos. And of course, this webinar. So there, um, watch out for more activities coming from the student support services. Next month po is our library month. Our librarian, Sir James Goldie Cruz, prepared exciting activities not only for the students but also um, for the entire family. So thank you very much. Once again, stay safe everyone until the next webinar po. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much you po. po. Thank you so much po. Thank you 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 po, ma'am. Thank you po. So I need to, ano pa po? Wala na pong kailangan. So I can leave na po, ma'am. Thank yes, you, Thank you very much, ma'am Jewel. Thank you po. Thank we'll you. keep in touch po. Okay po. Thank you po. Thank you po. Thank you po. Thank you, ma'am Marimil, for attending. Thank you po for your kind words. Thank you.